Did you know that in the Old Testament, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, they were baptized? They were baptized under Moses. Check this out. As you heard in my introduction, the Israelites, as they came out of Egypt, they were baptized unto Moses. They were baptized. And we read this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And the word says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. For with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it, as it is written, the people sat down to drink, or to eat, to drink, and rose up to play. So what does this mean? This means exactly what it says. They were baptized. See, when the Israelites lived in Egypt, they ad adopted a lot of the Egyptian gods in, in the Egyptian culture uh, and a lot of the Egyptian demons. So when they came out of Egypt, they had to be cleansed. God had to cleanse them and he cleansed them through the cloud. Because, as you know, there was a whirlwind by day and a, a pillar of fire by night. But when they passed through the Red Sea, that was their water baptism. They were cleansed of their filthiness. They were filthy in the sense that they were, they were doing some of the same Egyptian customs. Uh, some of the same sexual... Uh, sexual misbehavior within their worship of God. Uh, something else, uh, I actually looked it up on uh, Henry Commentary. And this is what I found as far as that went. In order to dissuade the Corinthians from communion with idolaters and security in any sinful course he sets before them the example of the Jews the church under the Old Testament they enjoyed great privileges but having been guilty of heinous provocations they fell under very grievous punishments in other words they had to pass through the wilderness some of us have to pass through the wilderness as well Actually, all of us, at some point in our life, we're going to have to go through that wilderness because we've lived our lives against God before we found God. And God, sometimes God sends us through that wilderness. That wilderness should be a learning experience for all of us. And we all go through this wilderness. 
some, uh, uh, some others, some longer than others. Uh, but the Israelites, 40 years, 40 whole years in the wilderness. And then when they come out of the wilderness, they were still disobedient. So, I mean, this wilderness that we go through in life, whether it be financial, whether it, whether it be uh, spiritual, no matter what, it should be a faith-growing experience. Because you know that you know that you know that God is going to deliver you from that wilderness. Some of you are going through uh, painful situations in your family where when you came to Christ, you came to Christ and your family turned against you. That happened to me. My own mother told me that I take this God thing too serious. How can you take God too seriously? Too seriously? God is the most serious person that you, should, that you should ever have on your mind. God is and always was and always will be the main motivation for you throughout your life. And God wants you to see that. So he sends us through these wildernesses. So all of my family turned against me because of my love for Christ. And, and uh, the Lord gave me a vision. He said, James, you see me purging people out of your life because I need you to concentrate on me. I need you to concentrate on my word. I need you to concentrate on what I'm trying to teach you. And I was directly taught by the Holy Spirit. Yes, I, I went through seminary and, and learned from a great pastor. But the things I learned from him pale in comparison to the things that the Holy Spirit taught me. And that's the same thing with Paul. When Paul, uh, on Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus, he saw Jesus. And then after his eyes were cleared, he went back to Tarsus and he, and he started his old job as a tent maker. During that 13 years, he was taught directly by the Holy Spirit. That's what you have to understand. You have to be taught by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to lead you and teach you and show you the right way. You have to pray and get that understanding and that discernment. And every Bible scripture you read, every sermon you hear, including from me, if anything I say raises a question or doubt, go back to the scripture that I showed you and then ask the Lord to show you what he wants you to know and to discern that word that I gave you for you. And he will. See, a lot of people don't believe that you should read the Old Testament. But uh, there's something in here that I wanted to point out. Uh, uh, starting right here, he says, He specifies some of their privileges. He began with their deliverance from Egypt. Our fathers, that is, the ancestors of us Jews, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Uh, they were all under the divine covering in conduct. So, basically, they were all under the covering. The covering that we have in Jesus. The protection. That's a great privilege because people that don't know Jesus don't have that covering. They're just uh, wandering through the world with no leader. Jesus has to be our leader. Jesus has to be that covering to protect us from things like false doctrine, for, for example. There's a lot of people out here spreading crazy things around that's not even in the Bible. 
And then when you confront them about it, they get offended and tell you you're ignorant. Okay, well, why is it in the Bible? Everything is in the Bible that you need to know. God does not contradict his word in any way. So if anybody tells you anything that contradicts his word, you need you need to stay away from that person. But going back to my point, uh, okay, here it is. They were miraculously conducted through the Red Sea where the pursuing Egyptians were drowned. There's that protection. It was a lane to them, but a grave to these. And this is what I wanted to point out. A proper type of our redemption of Christ who saved us by conquering and destroying his enemies and ours. There you have it. There you have it. Jesus has already conquered his enemies and ours. Hallelujah. So, whatever enemies that Jesus has, they're his enemies. But he also conquered our enemies. Our enemies. Anybody that stands against us, that tries to to harm us in any way, he's already conquered those. And that's the promise in the Bible. And he did the same thing with the Egyptians. They had to be baptized. They were under the covering, the covering of Jesus. And this is the thing. They were under that covering and God protected them from them Egyptians. As they were getting baptized, walking through the Red Sea, Jesus immediately took action and protected them from being harmed by the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians is a type of uh, uh, worldly carnal people like we have today in the world. So once you come to Christ, he will lead you, but you have to trust him and listen to what he tells you to do. He will lead you to certain areas and away from other areas. And that's the truth. And we have to trust him and believe him and believe everything he tells us and not doubt anything he says because you know the difference uh, between your own thoughts and the thoughts that Jesus has given you. You know the difference because you know his voice. You also know the difference in Jesus' voice and Satan's voice. If a voice tells you something that contradicts the word of God, you know either you thought it with your carnal thinking or some demon tried to trick you into believing whatever it was. You know it's not true because you have discernment. And your discernment will grow and your faith will grow as you get through this wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This wilderness should be a learning experience for you. It's a learning experience for me and anybody that goes through it. But like I say, not everybody goes through it. You have to be special in God in Christ. You have to have that. You have to have that. All right, Lord, I submit it all to you. Instantly, instantly, you became special in his eyes because you're willing to do it his way instead of your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good all the time. There's never been, even when I was going through this wilderness and part of me wanted to give up, Part of me wanted to give up. Hey, you know, I'm I'm losing my family, you know, but hey, sometimes God has to purge people out of your life that's going to uh, hinder your walk with him. And I love my mother. I love her. But see, the thing is, is she told me that I take this God thing too seriously. God can't have that. 
God can't have that in your life. Because if I were to listen to that and say, oh, well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe she's right. Maybe I need to uh, dial back on, on, you know, my uh, Bible studies and everything. Then I wouldn't be as far as I am today, spiritually. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm actually bragging on God because he put me here. He put me here. And it's only by him and his grace and his mercy that I'm here. I, I, like, like, David's, like David said back when uh, he was re- uh, repenting from uh, evil things that he done, he covered himself in the dust of the earth and called himself a worm because we have to realize that we're nothing without Jesus. We're nothing. We have to trust him. That wilderness that the Israelites went through, yours may not be 40 years. Then again, it may be longer than 40 years. Whatever it takes to get your mind to be Christ-like, for you to be living your life like Christ lived his, for you to be thinking the things that Christ thought. In his mind, the Father was number one in everything. And that's the way it should be for us. God should be over over everything. And God should be over family. I didn't understand that until God showed it to me. You know, I have to choose God over my family. Eventually, they'll see the light. And they'll come. And they'll understand. Now they come to me and they ask me biblical things. Now they do. And that's only by the grace of God. God got them as far as they are. And they're all coming back around. They're all coming back around. And there's grace that Jesus has shown. And only through him. Hallelujah. I thank you all for listening. This has been a great Bible study. Uh... I'm always fascinated with the parallels between the the New Testament and the Old Testament. Where when you read that word, you even when you're in the Old Testament, you can see it's all about Jesus and his work on the cross and that shedding of that precious blood as the perfect sacrifice for your sins and my sins. Hallelujah. Well, I thank you all for listening. And I pray that each and every one of you pray and ask the Lord to show you why you're going through your wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you all for listening. And I pray that each and every one of you have a blessed, blessed day.